Hey, thanks for stopping by Computer Creations. Today we're going to talk a little bit about lasers and photographs. I've had my laser for about a year now, and I've learned several things in the last couple of months that I thought I'd share with you. Probably the first thing that I will share with you is you just can't adjust your power and your speed and expect your uh, pictures on the different materials to come out. There's some additional things that you're going to have to do to your photographs in order for them to really pop. I've uh, edited thousands of photographs. Matter of fact, I used to own a photography business back in 2000. Um, the first thing that you got to realize is what you would normally do in, an, in a software editing program to make your pictures look good on photo paper is vastly different than what you need to do when you're trying to engrave something on a material like wood. And so we're going to do some simple things today to hopefully show you what you need to do in order to go ahead and take your pictures to the next level. I'm no expert, but there are some things that I've learned in the last couple of months that have really helped me out. And I'm hoping that if I share that with you, you can be well on your way to making awesome photographs on different materials with your laser. Stay tuned, let's check it out. So what I thought we'd do today is I'll take a puppy picture from the internet and duplicate it in Lightburn. I'll leave the picture on the right as untouched, meaning that I've just brought it in from the internet and I haven't done a thing to it. The only thing that I will do is I will match the power and speed of both images and then we'll go into the shape properties tab uh, and do some adjustments on the left picture. The shape properties tab is fairly new to me but once I discovered it man I tell you what I my pictures kind of took off. Now you can do the same thing uh, with a separate uh, photo editing software I just thought it was a little bit easier to show you and demonstrate kind of what uh, certain things like sharpness, contrast, gamma, those kind of things on uh, how they affect your picture and the way your laser sees it and the way it go ahead and burns it on a piece of wood. So stay tuned and we'll get right in it. Okay, so our subject for today is this little brown puppy. How can you go wrong with engraving a puppy picture? I just uh, searched uh, high resolution puppy pictures, found one with a, bat, uh, with a white background so we didn't have to do really any editing at all. I, uh, uh, when I bring this into Lightburn, I will have not touched it in any way other than just uh, copying and pasting it into Lightburn. So that's the one, that's what we're going to start with. And you'll notice when it's pasted into Lightburn, it's already going to be converted black and white. Okay, so now we've got, uh, just to show you what, what I've got going here, um, I have the original puppy picture pasted in. I've duplicated that puppy picture, and this is the one that we're going to play with. This is the adjusted one. This is the one that I'm not going to touch. Um, just in case uh, you're new to Lightburn, let's just get a couple things out of the way. Uh, we're going to be talking about Shape Properties tab today. And so if you don't see that Shape Properties tab, go up to uh, Window and make sure that the Shape Properties is selected here. Otherwise, you won't see it. Okay, and once you have that done, you'll notice that I have three layers here. I have the layer that we're going to play with, the layer that we're going to leave alone, and then just uh, some labeling here. So let's go in and just take a quick look at uh, the different layers I've got. So this is going to be the one on the left. And I'm going to keep these speeds and this power the same throughout the whole uh, process. So I've got 200 uh, millimeters per second on my speed, 21% power, 14 minimum. I've got 318 DPI, and I'm using, uh, using Jarvis as the image mode. Again, this is going to be completely your preference. So all I'm really hoping to do today is show you the power of the different settings in the Shape Properties tab and, and what it can do for you. Okay, so that's that one. And then if we jump into the original one that we're not going to touch, same speed and power. 
and you'll notice same DPI, same image mode. So what I thought I'd do is when we come into the Shape Properties tab, select the puppy on the left. What I've done, uh, this is the, the, the settings that I end, have ended up with. And what I will do for you is I'm going to engrave this puppy with a, a number of different settings to slowly get to where we ended up here. So you can see the difference between something that's completely untouched versus what you really need to have to make a difference when you're engraving uh, images on, on wood. The wood we're using today is just uh, some simple 8th inch Baltic birch plywood, pretty good quality. And so let's get started. Okay, so if you haven't uh, been involved or seen the Shape Properties tab, um, uh, let's just talk a little bit about what's going on over here. Um, you're, we've selected the puppy on the right, the one that I'm not going to uh, adjust in any way. Power scale is at a 100. Gamma is defaulted at 1. Contrast is at 0. Brightness is at 0. Enhance radius is at zero, enhance amount is at zero, and enhance denoise is at zero. The enhance, uh, the three enhanced uh, rows, that's basically just uh, sharpness, unsharp mask, I believe. And you'll see what a big difference uh, these top two make uh, in your picture. So basically, gamma is defaulted to one. Contrast, brightness, enhanced radius, enhanced amount, and I didn't adjust the enhanced denoise on any of the uh, of the uh, examples. So that one is going to continue to be zero. Um, on the labels of all these pictures, you'll see I just use G for gamma, C for contrast, B for brightness, EH for enhanced radius, and EA for enhanced amount. Okay, so that's what, and when you're adjusting these, you will be able to see real time the adjustments that it makes. The next thing you're going to see is just a picture of kind of a sequence of um, how I adjusted these amounts here and what it produced. Okay, so let me describe what you're looking at here. This is the original picture that we started with that we never adjusted. So our gamma is set to one, our contrast zero, brightness zero, uh, the radius is zero, and the uh, sharpening amount is zero. These are all basically plain, and this is what you have. Um, you'll notice that the picture is pretty muddy, meaning that you really can't see much in the eyes, the expression of the face, the nose is... Um, kind of muddy. Uh, there's not a lot of contour in the feet. Um, it's an image that that's just muddy. It's just not uh, very aesthetic. Watch what happens when you start to make some adjustments in your shape properties tab. So going over here to the far left, what we've done is we've brought our gamma down from 1 to 0.8. We've increased our contrast from 0 to 1.25 our brightness to 0.5, our um, sharpening amount to 5, and you'll notice that all of a sudden, just that little bit of adjustment, you're going to start to see these eye colors start to pop. You're going to get to see the nose is going to be uh, multiple colors, and you've got some depth. You've got some additional depth in the lips. You can start seeing the toes. Um, this fur back in here is still pretty muddy, but you'll see as we go along, it'll get better and better. So reduce the gamma a little bit, increase the contrast, in increase the sharpness. Take it a step further, uh, excuse me, a step further. We drop the gamma down from 0.8 to 0.7. We increased our contrast. We increased our brightness and we increased our radius uh, and sharpening amounts. This is enhanced radius, enhanced amount. Again, those are just sharpening amounts, okay? You really start to see the difference in the eyes. The muddiness in the eyes is starting to go away. You really get to see a lot more definition in his forehead. 
Um, his nose, uh, the surrounding wrinkles in his nose start to come out. You'll notice that we've got a, a little bit brighter chin right here. Um, just remember that your laser likes contrast. Um, that's really how it's able to show definition in your pictures. Taking it a step further, if we go from uh, gamma from 0.7 to 0.65, increased our contrast a little bit, increased our brightness a little bit, increased our sharpening a little bit, you'll notice now we're starting to get into the sweet spot. And again, this is kind of a personal preference. I'm going to like something that's maybe just a little bit differently than what you like. But you get the idea on what we're doing here. But you'll notice now a lot more definition in the chest. You can actually start to see this fur a little better compared to what you do here. The, the, the overall image is better balanced from a color perspective. Um, you can see that the ears are a little bit more separated. Okay. Take it just a step further. Drop down the gamma to 0.65, increase the contrast to 5.0, your brightness to 2.0, your enhanced radius to 20, and your enhanced amount to 200%. And you'll notice now, it, really between these two images, uh, you can see that we've come a long way compared to where we started just by um, playing with the gamma, playing with the contrast, and increasing your brightness and your sharpening effects. Now you can do this in, in uh, third-party photo editing software. You don't have to do it in Lightburn, but this was just an, a, an easy way for me to show you how to do it just in one particular place. Um, but you can see this is untouched. This is just brought into Lightburn without having any shape properties whatsoever compared to this um, in just really a handful of clicks, you can see that you made a dramatic difference in how this was engraved. Um, I use a uh, Thunder Nova 24. It's a 60 watt uh, laser, just so you know kind of uh, the amount of intensity that we've got going on here. Anyway, hope this was helpful. Well, there you have it. Playing with the gamma, the contrast, and the sharpness in your images can sure make a big difference to get you on the right track to producing some great images. I hope this was helpful, and as always, please like and subscribe. Until next time, have a great day.